Good evening, everyone. This is the regular meeting of the Downers Grove Grade School District 58 Board of Education here on Monday, November 13th, 2023 at 7 p.m. at the Downers Grove Village Hall. This meeting is being live streamed for the public on the Village of Downers Grove's YouTube channel. Melissa, will you please call roll? Member Joshi. Here. Member Ellis. Here. Member Hannes. Here. Member Harris. Here. Member Olchik is absent. Member Weiner. Here. Member Hughes. Here. Tonight, members of the audience will have an opportunity to provide public comment later on in the agenda. The board asks anyone wishing to make a comment to please fill out a card and indicate the topic to be discussed and to please place it in the basket over there to my right. I have allotted 30 minutes tonight for public comment and I ask you to keep your public comments to three minutes so everyone has an opportunity to speak. We're going to start off today with our truth in taxation hearing. Um, so I want to welcome up. Uh, Oh, there you are. <laughs> I want to welcome up uh, Todd Drayfall. You're hiding on me. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I'm behind the podium. Uh, good evening, uh, Board of Education, members of the public. This is the Truth in Taxation hearing uh, that happens when a, a taxing body uh, puts in a request above a 5% uh, for truth for, for taxation for property taxes. Property taxes. Uh, for Downers Grove and for many, uh, the Collar Counties, Cook County, many counties downstate is limited by the property tax extension limitation law or tax cap um, that limits the district to what it can increase to 5% plus, up to 5% plus whatever new, new property allows for. That is if the CPI is at that level. Last year, um, and to understand, we always received the revenue in arrears of when the inflation actually hit. The change in December of 21 to December of 22 was 6.5%. Uh, that limits us um, in our 2023 levy that we receive in 2024 uh, to 5%, which is the cap. Uh, previous, the year before that, CPI was at 7%. Uh, again, we were limited to that 5% growth a year behind. Um, Right now, the CPI for this year is averaging somewhere between 3.5, 3.8. We will know what that change in December is sometime in January, and that will affect going forward um, for the next levy in the following year. The truth in taxation piece is when a unit of government asks for more than that. Our levy request is 7.5% above last year's extension. The reason why it is higher than well, the 5% pieces, we simply don't know uh, two factors in this. We don't know what the assessed value will be, and we don't know what the new property will be uh, for the area. This is a reassessment year, uh, and some of the townships that uh, we cover uh, have some reassessments that could be uh, 5, 6, 7%. Growth in property has risen. Um, they are you know, they do a sales ratio study. They have to go and go abide by that sales ratio study that the county does for them, and those values have to increase according to to what that number is. So, you know, the good news is there could be some property growth, and in, in you know, value of property is up. Um, that also will help in what the tax rate will be because if EAV is higher overall than what you can grow in tax tax property tax ask. The, the rate is, you know, can, can go down. And that's what has happened uh, since tax caps came into place in 1992, is, a, is more often than not, uh, the CPI has been below what the growth of EAV and, and tax rates have fallen over that time. Uh, this, uh, uh, I don't have, pre like I said, a pre presentation. The numbers and the information uh, in the packet for the tax levy that the board has uh, recommended, that, that there's a recommendation to the board for approval later on in the agenda. Uh, those numbers have been in multiple uh, documents in a sense, uh, starting with uh, the five-year planning uh, process that happens in the spring, uh, the budget process uh, with the uh, approved budget uh, in the fall and August and September, uh, and then last month uh, in the memo uh, circulated area in the board, to the board uh, and the Financial Advisory Committee with the recommended estimates for the tax levy for this year. Uh, the final recommendation that is on the agenda this evening have not uh, changed from that recommendation uh, among uh, last month. Uh, 
you know, we have had, uh, we are, are, are limited in, in the piece of property taxes are the majority of our the huge part of our revenue source that uh, covers our programs. Uh, we have, as everyone, uh, been impacted significantly by a uh, cost of inflation. Uh, I can remind the board, they know well know that uh, when we renewed our transportation contracts uh, several months ago, uh, some of those were in the 9% range. Uh, obviously, you know, 5%, 9%, there's a big difference between 5 and 9. We we're always having to find ways to, to make adjustments to, to meet uh, the demands with uh, the limits of revenue that we have, uh, and we continually work to do that. As again, as I noted before, uh, we get the revenue after the inflation has already hit and after those expenses have already increased. Another example um, is uh, our health insurance piece. Our renewal for our main large uh, benefit program, our universal plan, increased by 8%. Uh, if, and as the board uh, remembers, the Health and Wellness Committee made a recommendation that the board approved back uh, in September that we would change um, our prescription drug plan. That helped keep that plan <coughs> down to an 8% from a 10% with some of the savings from that piece and continues, we continue to work through those things. So those are some of the examples that we have of, of increases in inflation and expenses um, through that time. So uh, I should also mention there's one piece I always, there's a new law uh, that took effect this last year uh, that um, in any time there's presentation of budget and tax levy for a local government, that cash balance is mentioned or discussed. As the board is aware that you receive every month a year-to-date report uh, that measures expenditures and revenues against where we are with budget and prior year, it always has a fund balance, a, a cash balance by fund and uh, an overall uh, and, and then some comparisons uh, over a multi-year process. So we meet that criteria not just when we are presenting or talking about the budget of the tax levy, but every month uh, that the board has with a, with a a presentation in, in the packet for that. So with the, that part we have, you know, we continually meet and exceed what uh, the law uh, calls for in that cash balance presentation. So other than that, I, unless I, that's all I have for this hearing, uh, okay. unless there's questions from the board. All right, then at this time, I'm gonna declare the hearing open to allow members of the audience to comment on this topic. Anyone wishing to be heard, please step forward, come up to the podium, and please um, give us your name, your attendance area, and any organization that you may be part of, for the record. All right, so I welcome you up at this time. All right, then if there is no further comments, I now declare this hearing closed at 7.08 p.m. All right, we're gonna now kick off our regular meeting. We're gonna start it off as we always do with the Pledge of Allegiance. I'd like to welcome the <coughs> student council from Fairmont School to help lead us. States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And I'd like to welcome Principal Nefratos. Good evening. Thank you so much for having us. It is my privilege to introduce both our student council co-sponsors as well as our 23-24 student council officers. Hello everyone, my name is Molly Aitken. I'm Oscar Larson. And we're the co-presidents at Fairmont School. I'm JJ Nagy, and I'm treasurer of Fairmount School. <coughs> I'm Jake DeGraff, and I'm the vice president of Fairmont School. I'm Hannah Stapleton, and I'm the secretary. I'm Haley Epperly, and I'm Hannah's co-secretary. From October 23rd to October 27th, we, recogni we recognized Red Ribbon Week at Fairmount School with a Spirit Week. 
We had different themes each day to focus on making healthy choice choices such as relaxing and staying healthy by wearing your favorite vacation clothes and teaming up and making healthy choices by wearing a team sport or jersey. We will also have a winter spirit week the week before winter break to get into the winter and holiday spirit. The week before spring break, we plan to have a spring theme spirit week as well. And to end the year, we want to have an Olympic theme spirit week because the Olympics are taking place in the summer of 2024. We are excited to continue to see school spirit at Fairmount. Our first project we are focusing on as a school kicked off today. We are collecting items for Nas Humane Society. We have a goal as a school to reach 100 items to donate. In, Dece in December, we're going to have a giving tree at Fairmont where students can donate new hats and gloves and scarves to children in need in the Downers Grove area. In the spring, we are going to have a canned food drive, and we are hoping to have one more project to focus on, on as a school that we haven't decided on yet. We are excited to give back to our community with our collections at Fairmount this year. So jumping right in, we have been focusing for one of our school improvement um, initiatives in support of District 58's Be Respectful, Be Responsible, and Be Safe. Our Positive Behavior Support Systems team has just been working since the summer on not only developing that we have these systems in place, but that they're visual, that they're available, and that our students are supported in understanding what the expectations are in each of those spaces. Fortunately for us, the previous school year, we had actually kicked off our building bricks being our best, which you can see there. And so it really um, led nicely into those three umbrella areas of respectful, responsible, and safe, and we're already in process at Fairmount the previous school year. Um, I'm going to explain a little bit more about our monthly matters in the next sli slide, but we've really been focusing on each month at Fairmount. We come together um, in a group assembly. It's called our monthly matters, where we not only recap and focus on those three areas of importance throughout our school, both in and out of the classroom, but we also kind of bring the students up and have them contribute to different ideas as well with a different focus area each month. <coughs> As you can see here, again, focusing on those monthly matters assembly, essentially that students are earning stars. So the little stars that you can see in the jar, every time they really demonstrate and exhibit a responsible trait, respectful trait, or a safe trait within their classroom, within PE spaces, within the lunchroom, outside, they can earn stars from any staff member, not just their classroom teacher, and they contribute them into a collection jar within whatever space they're in at the time. The biggest thing that we have found so successful and what we're so proud of our students are is that the star is not necessarily for them. It's contributing to a school-wide goal that they have really um, really just drawn onto and really captured that they are working towards a collective goal. They're not working for an individual purpose, but that they're really coming together and they've just been doing an awesome job. In both the months of September and October, we not only filled our main star jar, but actually filled a second jar. So they've been earning different school-wide recognitions that really our students have been giving us feedback on what they would like to see be those areas. Um, and then moving forward, they'll be doing the same as well. As part of this, every Friday, a student representative from each learning space comes down into the office. We call it Fill It Friday. It's a really exciting time, and we bring all those individual jars together into one collective space to see just how much we are really demonstrating those imp important attributes within our school community. And like I said, they've been doing an awesome job. Um, what you can see pictured on the right up there or on the left, depending on where you're sitting, um, the school-wide celebration we most recently did was a school-wide bingo game. It gave students an opportunity to jump on a Google Meet within their classroom, but it was a fall-based bingo game, and it was really a nice opportunity just to have everybody together. And it wasn't about who won the game, it was about that we earned it collectively as a school community, so they're doing an awesome job. 
to focus on a couple of things that we started new at Fairmount this year. It's always good to keep going with some things that we've had in place that are working really well, but just wanted to highlight a couple of new things at Fairmount. We do what we call Talk About Tuesday. You'll catch on quickly that I love alliteration, um, but Talk About Tuesday is an opportunity. We have our sixth grade student ambassadors do our announcements pretty much every day of the week, except for Tuesday now. So every individual classroom has the opportunity to do individualized announcements that they kind of kick off on those Tuesdays mornings they can do videos they can do live announcements they can do a combination of things and we highlight that classroom and it's been an awesome opportunity for each classroom to show their creativity and we estimate that they'll get to do it about three times this school year and they've really been doing a great job with that in addition for our staff specifically we're now hosting in class meetings so every time we have a faculty meeting and come instead of coming together as a common space we are actually going into each individual learning space throughout the school and when we do that the first five minutes of each faculty meeting we actually spend having the teacher or the staff member starting um, and kicking off that meeting where they can show off an area of their classroom they can actually ask for help in an area of their classroom and that card that you can kind of see up there each individual staff member then fills that out and gives it to the staff member just to offer some feedback offer some positive compliments and it's really already in the month of November we've done it a handful of times and it's really showing a lot of growth and also allowing all of our teachers to see the different spaces within our school which is a great opportunity our sixth graders some of which are here featured in their lovely green shirts we um, kicked off having student ambassadors this year it really is kind of a, a an increase of what safety patrol used to be but there's multiple different leadership opportunities for our sixth graders to take part in they are helping our youngest students in lunch they are mentoring our students at recess and they've just been doing a fantastic job and that is headed by two of our staff members and then um, all of our grade levels have been assigned school-wide buddies and we've been doing a lot with our respectful responsible and safe behaviors and have a lot of plans to do more with that buddy work as well this is just again highlighting some of those things you can see it on social media all the time but just what our student ambassadors are doing like I said supporting them during lunch having nice conversations that in class <coughs> meeting where our, our teachers have the opportunity to be highlighted in the great work that they're doing as well as those talk about Tuesdays which I think each classroom got over their initial stage fright and are now doing an awesome job on those announcement days jumping into school improvement our um, Fairmount ILT has obviously been working together on developing growth areas for the past three years I have been just blown away by the amount of work time and energy that they have really put into not only looking at our achievement but really concentrating on the growth for all students this year um, we have targeted we started in the summer back in June when we initially met and really wanted to um, tease out some areas where we were seeing a need not just necessarily for general improvement but where we really wanted to target some growth gains um, what rose to the top for us was numbers and operations and I'm going to talk a little bit more about how we're targeting that from an instructional lens in a moment but that just a sampling of grade levels and what we were looking at as far as the data was concerned back in the spring and again it's it's looking globally K through six regardless of where your child is starting regardless of what they are targeting that we are really working towards and targeting growth options um, within the school day for them we have done um, just uh, the teachers have done a phenomenal job not only with the implementation of bridges the past few years and big ideas but also really teaching that curriculum with fidelity our next steps from an instructional lens and what ILT is supporting is really targeting those tailored small group instruction and we want teachers and the staff to be supported in recognizing that that's not always just going to be a simple organized group but that in the moment you might identify students that need help in the moment you might be planning for instructional opportunities that are intentional decisions based on what you're seeing in the class and what you can do the next day to build on those growth opportunities for the students ILT did a phenomenal job a couple weeks ago starting with collaborative conversations with our staff seeing where we're at right now with small group options and where we need to go moving forward to really emphasize and build up those um, build up those opportunities within our classroom they're already doing small group instruction but how can we make it bigger and better and how can we make sure that we are really intentionally looking at the who the what and the when surrounding those small group opportunities we also had Christine Priester come uh, last week to give a little bit more heftier and more targeted presentation on those small group opportunities and we're really looking at making sure that every opportunity that we are doing is in response to what the students need in the moment but also long-term to make that growth within that math classroom 
this is just to highlight, like I said, the last three years that what we have been really focusing on as an ILT and at Fairmount School. In 21-22, we looked at vocabulary development, and that was through intentional teacher read-alouds. 22-23, we did a lot with informational text. A lot had to do with our social studies curriculum at the time. And again, as I just mentioned, we are now focusing on numbers and operations. So what I'm most proud of, I think, for the staff and ILT specifically, is that yes, while this year we are looking at numbers and operations and we are instructionally concentrating on those small groups in math, we are continuously going back and making sure that these previously targeted areas are continuing to grow. So again, this was our focus last year. This is the most recent data from spring, not from fall, but from spring, a sampling of what now our informational text looks like. And we continue to see ongoing growth in those areas. And I'm just, again, really proud of the committee for continuously looking at this and making sure that we keep up with some of those instructional practices that we initiated as part of our growth targets the previous years. And this, again, from two years ago, vocabulary development, we really hit that we needed intentional teacher read-alouds, that they needed to occur a minimum of 10 minutes a day, four days a week, so that students had the opportunity to hear an adult voice read and read with the intention of growing their vocabulary. And we have just seen an extensive amount of growth because of the continuous work that not only the committee has done, but that the team and the staff have collectively done together. So that's just to highlight that we keep on looking at those areas as well. And that is it, unless there's any questions. But thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. And we have a couple of gifts for our uh, student council leaders. So, Thank you, Fairmount students. You did a great job. And thank you to all of our parents who came out tonight, too. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Next up is our non-action reports. First up is the communications. Listed on tonight's agenda is one communication received by the board. Are there any additional communications a board member would like to share at this time? Okay, and that brings us to the spotlight on our school, which is on the school report card. Ms. Earhart. So I don't know what I said, but I'm Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, good evening, board. So this will be our culminating presentation on our um, fall and uh, summative um, information from our spring data. Uh, we will be looking at our Illinois school report card and summative designations as well. So a little bit about what we will be looking at this evening, our state assessment data, our summative designations, state percentile rankings, and then how all of that data is connected to our district key performance indicators or KPIs. So the first slide that you will see is um, a screenshot of what our interactive report card looks like. Um, all of the links to our report cards are available on our district website. If you go under about and then school report cards, the district report card is listed as well as all of the report cards for each individual school linked um, appropriately. So when you look at our district report card, it is just an overview of some of our sampling of information. The number of schools we have, what our student mobility is, where we are in terms of our funding, as well as our chronic absenteeism and retention, and our summative designations and growth on IAR. On the actual school report card website, on the left-hand side, there is a list of different um, sections that you can go to to dive deeper into that data. Um, the one that I want to highlight is our academic tab, and this shows um, what just an outstanding job our district has done in um, our, our student achievement and growth. So when we look at, at our IAR data, we are showing that 59% of our students um, met the targets on IAR and ELA, 
and 54% of our students um, met that target in math, and I apologize, my glasses are not um, focusing on, on that board, which is why I'm looking over here, so I apologize, I'm like, that's a little small. Um, so I'm sorry for that. Additionally, we do see our DLM um, data there, which is our dynamic learning maps assessment, or our alternate assessment for our students um, with disabilities. We also see our math or our science achievement at 75% proficient. And then the proficiency that is in that second row does combine the dy um, dynamic learning maps as well as IAR together. Then additionally, we do look at our growth. Um, the state average is always going to be at that 50th percentile, so we were above average in our growth for the state with ELA at 57 percent, or the 57th percentile, and math at the um, 51st percentile. Additionally, we had um, great participation, ooh, excuse me, participation this year at 99 percent. When we look at our IAR growth calculation, the Illinois School Report Card shows student growth as a measure of our students compared to students' performance over time to their academic peers, which means a student who scored the same score the, um, the year prior in comparison to that following year. So when we are looking at our student growth percentile, what we are wanting to see is that they are um, at that 50th percentile or above, which is showing that we are hitting that right up in the middle mark, and then above average, which is where we fell. ECRA has a little bit of a different way of showing our growth calculation because we have to remember that ECRA is using localized norms. So when we enter our information into ECRA, they're using our data to set norms. So the ECRA um, calculation for growth is based upon personalized projections for each student, individual student past performance, looking at those local norms, and then considering a range of growth in looking at their expectations for achievement and their individual growth targets. When we look at that IAR growth via ECRA, we are showing that we are higher than expected um, growth in ELA on our IAR scores. Um, so that shows that we had um, higher than expected growth um, across the board in all, um, or I'm sorry, expected or higher than expected growth at all schools. Additionally, when we look at our mathematics scores, we do see that expected growth range with several of our schools hitting that higher than expected growth in math. So now this is another slide that is very teeny tiny in terms of the, but we wanted to give you a scope of all of the large elementary districts in DuPage County. And you can see that they are, um, in descending order in terms of the ELA um, proficiency and, and math proficiency, where Downers Grove is hitting right at the t um, towards the top of that comparison in terms of large elementary districts. Additionally, we do see on this particular slide a comparison of our growth percentiles as well as our per pupil spending and. Um, our, our percent towards ad adequacy in terms of how much we are spending on individual students. Additionally, we put a comparison together of our District 99 feeder schools. This shows that Downers Grove is performing at the top of that group of um, school districts. Um, and, and having just really um, great success. I did have um, a conversation with um, several of our middle school teachers and uh, conversations that they have had with our District 99 counterparts and how much success we are seeing from our District 58 students when they um, go on to Downers Grove North and Downers Grove South. From all the information that is collected in our Illinois School Report Card, schools are given a summative designation. I went into great detail in that last board meeting about what the breakdown was and how those calculations come into play. But here is a, a listing. Um, we're very proud of the work that all of our schools have done. And we see that all of our schools are um, commendable or exemplary on our Illinois School Report Card. 
again, just a reminder of what those seven designations are calculated with, the largest being our ELA and math growth on IAR as calculated by ISBE. Additionally, we have another 25% of our score being calculated by other academic indicators, including math proficiency, ELA proficiency, science proficiency, and then again, that um, ELP to P, which is our English language learners progress to proficiency. If a school does not have that category, the other um, academic indicators are spread out over that additional 5%. And then we also have 25% that makes up our chronic absenteeism at 20% and our climate survey. Our chronic absenteeism is something that did prohibit some of our schools from receiving that exemplary rating um, on this Illinois school report card. So it's something that we're actively working with. Our, MT, um, our PBSS and our attendance committees are um, sharing information with principals. Principals are sharing that information out weekly in their, staff, or in their um, school newsletters and we have also shared that through Communicate 58 with our district. We just want people um, in our community and in our school district to understand the importance of that student attendance rate um, and the chronic absenteeism is part of our summative designation um, calculation. Here is a list of the, those um, group indexes in terms of what the calculation was for, sum, or for summative designations. You can see that the 2023 exemplary threshold was 81.33. Um, again, we had two schools, Fairmount and Highland, that um, met over that exemplary threshold, the rest being commendable with no one underneath that comprehensive threshold of 34.35. Additional information about summative designations will be shared with individual um, building PTAs and then links to the district and each school report card are available on the district website as I shared. Those um, report cards and those links are interactive so there's a lot of graphs and, and um, graphics that you can look at to show the data in various ways. Um, one thing that is new is if you click on a school summative designation, there is a schoolhouse model that really shows where each of their, um, each of their indicators within this um, index score where those ratings were. So you can really break down that um, individual summative designation data, which is new this year. We're gonna talk a little bit about our percentile analysis through ECRA. One of the things that we wanna remind the board and um, the community is that there is benefits to moving away from just raw numbers and being able to look at percentiles because percentiles are simple and they're comparable. They're easy to communicate. It is a way that we measure many things, um, not just in education, but in life in general. And so when we look at percentiles um, of percentiles versus percentages, when we see something like 30% of eighth graders in Illinois are meeting their ELA standards, we have to recognize that across the nation that actually puts Illinois at the 86th percentile for eighth graders. So that just shows how rigorous our Illinois um, expectations are on our IAR report. So any student who meets or exceeds is hitting that level four or five, where typically you would see a level three being um, that average range. So we are, we do have higher expectations in terms of meeting or exceeding here in the state of Illinois. So Illinois um, eighth graders are at the 86th percentile on the national level, where we do see that 30% of our eighth graders in Illinois, not specific to Downers Grove, but in Illinois, are meeting ELA standards. So again, uh, the report that I shared with the board um, this past week was several comparisons in terms of percentiles, into, including teacher salary, average class size, EAV per student, um, expenditures per student, and then growth and proficiency. We're going to specifically look at academic indicators. So as a district, you can see that our ELA proficiency this school year while it was at 58.1% meeting or exceeding in that ELA proficiency, um, that puts the district at the 90th percentile in comparison to all Illinois schools in ELA. That was an increase of six percentile points, not six percentage points, um, in the um, in the comparison from 2022 to 2023. 
Additionally, our math proficiency stayed in the 94th percentile, but we did see an increase in the number of students that met, um, met or ex exceeded those proficiency targets. Additionally, on ISA, we saw an increase from the 83rd percentile in 2022 to the 89th percentile, which was an increase of six percentile points. And then our participation, um, it's so interesting to see the difference in, sh in shift from um, our ELA math and participation from last year to this year because those percentages don't seem like a very big difference, 1.1 in ELA and 1.5 in math, but that just goes to show that um, participation on our IAR um, most schools do get 99%, which is where we hit this year, and we increased um, to um, we increased 30 um, percentile points and 39 percentile points, respectively. Additionally, we saw an increase in our growth percentile. So as you can see, um, compare, comparative to other districts in Illinois, our ELA growth percentile last year was at the 54th percentile. We are now at the 84th percentile. That is a great big jump right there um, in terms of our growth. And then our math growth went from the 42nd percentile to the 64th percentile. So again, just really great progress. And I wanna commend all of the teachers, all of the administrators for the hard work that they've put into their um, school improvement planning as um, Lisa had just shared about Fairmount, the amount of tremendous work that goes into really targeting the goals that we set. It's really amazing when you can see that growth um, show in, in the data reports. Here's just another view of our ELA. So I'm jumping back to the school report card, but that's just showing a difference year over year of the number of students who met or exceeded on ELA IAR. That is the light green and the dark green. So we saw that pretty large increase um, for that year. But then we also can notice that we are looking at um, number of students that are at that level three which has um, it increased a little bit, but that's because we saw a decrease in, oh, I'm sorry, that decreased, um, but we saw a decrease also in our level one and two. So it's really encouraging to see those um, numbers go um, over that um, meeting or exceeding line at zero. And then additionally, we didn't see quite as much of a jump in mathematics, but we did see um, a slight improvement from last year um, to this year. And then we also are looking at how can we see students moving from our ones, twos, and threes into the twos, threes, and fours, and um, so on. When we look at our key performance indicators, so our first one is our academic key performance indicator. I did speak to our um, key performance indicator on growth at our last meeting, but in terms of our academic key performance indicator, our goal in ELA is that we are at the 75th percentile. Our actual in 2023 was the 90th percentile. Um, in 2022, we saw nine schools at or above the 75th percentile and the, that range was from 61st to 90th and this year we saw 10 schools at or above that 75th percentile with um, the range being from the 68th to the 95th percentile an increase in both areas and then additionally in math our key performance indicator target is the 85th percentile, so slightly above what our expectation in um, ELA is. Our actual um, percentile for math is the 94th percentile. So we see really great academic achievement at that, um, in that math area with nine schools that are above the 85th percentile with a range from the 68th to the 96th percentile in 2022. And we still saw nine schools um, at or above the 85th percentile this year, and that range increased slightly to the 69th to 97th percentile. So when we're looking at um, a school being in the 97th percentile, um, and we're looking across the state of Illinois, that's a pretty incredible achievement. 
So additionally, at the last meeting, I shared our growth KPI, so our benchmark for overall students demonstrating growth is 85th percentile, and we met that target of overall growth right at, 80, um, at the 85th percentile. Um, we always are talking about are those KPIs um, at a level that we want them to be. So I think that that's increased conversation. Um, we'll bring that to DLT um, at, at a future meeting to see is that something that we maybe want to make an adjustment to in terms of what our benchmarks and thresholds are, um, or is it something that we are comfortable um, sustaining right now? And is that an appropriate growth target, both in um, growth and achievement? So some of our next steps, we use this report card data to monitor growth and achievement on IR <coughs> year over year. We review implementation of our school improvement goals and progress in meeting those goals. And then we continue um, to build staff capacity, capacity in utilizing our data collection platforms and using them to make instructional decisions. So that's really just making sure that our teachers feel supported in the use of our ECRA model, as well as other formative um, assessment tools that, that we have available. The things that we want to remember as we're looking at data is, yes, that spring is our summative um, assessment data, but those interval assessments in fall and winter are a formative tool that we can use to drive a lot of this work. We want to make sure that we are continuing to see growth of our students, and then we want to ensure that our partnership with families um, in understanding how our data informs our practices and what we use that data for. So really our administrative teams working through our LLTs, which is our um, leadership learning teams, our grade level meetings where we're bringing all of our teachers together. We just hosted those last week, and it was just such an incredible opportunity to hear those groups of educators talk together about things that are working in their classrooms and areas that they needed support and we were able to provide that to them um, having ongoing and consistent conversations um, and providing opportunities to learn from one another our PLMs are just so beneficial for doing that we have a variety of opportunities for our teachers and staff to participate in and they're really um, working hard to meet those um, school improvement goals as we heard this evening as um, Kingsley and O'Neill shared in our previous spotlights and as you'll see throughout the school year from our other schools. We're really proud of the efforts that we're making and um, really wanting to just continue to look at how do we raise achievement as much as we can, but how do we ensure that our achievement is matched with growth and how are we supporting our student growth models as well. Any questions? Any questions from the board or comments? Thank you very much. Uh, it, it was incredible to, to see this this year. And I, well, two things I want to know um, is that those charts where we're seeing our growth and our achievement, mm -hmm. it's really great that we're seeing it happening at sort of all levels. We're seeing ones and twos goes to two, twos and threes. We're seeing our threes and fours move up to fours and fives. So whether it's our, you know, from our gifted kids to our, our kids that are struggling, we, we're seeing growth at all levels. And then just one more note. Since over the last two years, we've really been focusing on the school improvement plans. Uh, we heard a lot about ELA and building up the, the literacy there. And I, I think we're seeing uh, a, a direct result of that work that's going on there. So clearly, um, the data that we're getting out of ECRA and us actually taking the time to get the community around uh, taking, whether it's MAP or IAR seriously, uh, gives us an opportunity to use that, that data, and it seems like we're using it in a very positive way, so thank you very much. Thank you. Liz, thank you. This ends your free uh, <laughs> presentation uh, string that you had there. <laughs> uh, all things curriculum, right? Uh, right? We'll give you December off for a presentation, but again, you in your first year, thank you for stepping up, and I, I want to echo what Liz said, just to really thank our um, board for being so supportive of all of our school improvement initiatives. Um, in particular, early release Mondays. I know those are very challenging for our families to, to make all those uh, logistics work, but um, a lot of that work takes place in those early release Mondays. I want to thank our principals for being strong instructional leaders. Uh, Lisa, you did a great job tonight on your presentation. And then also our staff members and, and students for implementing this. Um, if you think back to where we were, in 2018, 2019 on this particular assessment. Uh, we've come a long way as a community. We've come a long way as a school district. 
Um, certainly, I would love to say that we'll get these huge jumps every single year in the data. I, I do want to temper those expectations a little bit, uh, but this year was, was very, um, very good for us as a school district, and we never want to over-celebrate, but we also want to take the time to congratulate good work, and, and our curriculum department and our buildings have done uh, a lot of really good work here, and we look forward to continuing this success and, and keep building on it, so thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, that brings us to the reports to the board. We'll go ahead and start with the superintendent report, Dr. Russell. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, first up is, is a note to the school board or uh, you know, a, a shout out of recognition. November 15th is school board members day. So tonight is about saying thank you to our District 58 Board of Education members. Our board members spend multiple hours each month on district work, attending meetings, um, answering emails, and so many other responsibilities. Um, this is time that uh, they volunteer for the community. And with uh, School Board Member Appreciation Day coming up, we wanted to thank the board for all of their hard work and uh, dedication. And it's often a thankless job, uh, but you do a really good job. And we're very proud to work for this Board of Education. So thank you for all that you do on behalf of our student staff and community. It's only one more shopping day. <laughs> in terms of personnel uh, this is the time of the year that we typically develop our draft school calendar for the coming school year this year we intend to present both the 2024-25 calendar and the 2025-26 school calendars for approval in December that is something our board has been asking for and we're bringing a two-year recommendation to you next month um, we're doing this uh, because of construction planning, but also the need to ensure that um, our families are kept in the loop and can plan ahead. If, if we're talking about things like chronic absenteeism, we really want to make sure that our families have all that information ahead of time so they can make uh, decisions outside of the school year. I want to thank Justin Sissel. He's working behind the scenes on our calendar. Um, he's attending a lot of our construction meetings to see how we can make this calendar work. So more will be brought to the board, but we will share with the board drafts ahead of this. We'll also share with our associations. We're contractually obligated to do that. So uh, we hope to bring a calendar or calendars, I should say, for approval uh, next month. So definitely more to come on that. And thank you, Justin, uh, for getting all that work done. In terms of curriculum and instruction, we just passed Veterans Day, and even though Veterans Day was on a weekend, we still take the time uh, to celebrate Veterans Day with various activities throughout our schools, but also to teach our students the importance of Veterans Day. So Liz made sure that all of our buildings were uh, doing that, and I want to thank our principals again for going above and beyond and making that day special for our students, but more importantly, for the veterans in our various uh, school neighborhoods. So thank you very much to that. Okay, finance, it's hard to believe, but we're almost at November 15th. That is open enrollment deadline date. So we have spent the last month, members of the Health and Wellness Committee and Administration, uh, going to each one of the buildings and discussing benefits and the various packages that we offer. Our goal is to always um, keep great benefits for our staff, but to do so in a manner that respects our taxpayers and recognizes that we are a self-insured school district. So we've spent a lot of time um, talking about the various plans that we offer as a school district and really trying to educate our staff. As we know from research, people spend very little time on making healthcare decisions. And a lot of times they just do what they've always done because that feels the most comfortable. Well, sometimes plans like an HSA uh, with a PPO can be not only a benefit to the individual or their family, but also to the school district. And so really just trying to educate our staff. Uh, we want to thank our staff for letting them or letting us come over the lunches over the last month, but we appreciate everyone who was able to attend. We also did a virtual evening session for the, uh, you know, spouses or significant others that they too had questions about our plans. Okay, for technology, the tech department's been working on a variety of projects as we approach the end of the first trimester. Though it may seem early, we've begun setting up and reviewing our registration system for next year. That comes quick. We hope to uh, open registration uh, to new returning students in February of 2024. So each year, we're trying to get that a lot or closer to the start of the new year. That way we can um, know the number of students that are coming to us so it helps us plan for the summer and the following school year, especially in terms of our budget. So James, thank you. And uh, thank you to the tech department behind the scenes for getting all that going. Special services. The special services department encourages all families of students with special needs to learn more regarding the Downers Grove Police Department's safe return program. 
Uh, information will be highlighted in an upcoming principal newsletter, but just for the board, Safe Return is a premise alert program for children who may have difficulty communicating and are at risk for becoming confused, disoriented, or lost. Please use the details provided by families uh, for the purpose of identifying and locating a child who is reported missing, found wandering, or other emergency circumstances. Look for information soon on the supportive community program for our children with special needs or review the link on the Downers Grove Police Department's website. I want to commend Jessica and our police department for really working together on that. Nothing's more important than making sure that we take care of our students with special needs both in and outside of school. In terms of facilities, um, Lisa, you will like this one. I am very pleased to report that the Fairmount Playground is finally done. Um, I want to thank the Fairmount students, the staff, and the families for their patience, flexibility, and, and quite frankly, grace. Um, this was too long of a project. Uh, as I shared before, we are not going to be using uh, the contractor, even though we've used this contractor in the past and had a lot of success. Um, I think we can all agree that waiting to November for a playground that was supposed to be done the week before school is just too long. Uh, none of us are satisfied with that. Uh, but we really do appreciate uh, Fairmount, the staff, making adjustments on a daily basis. Uh, we, it is open. We're, we're very happy about that. Uh, but, but again, thank you to the Fairmount uh, community. Last Monday in this room, we also presented our draft middle school plans to the Village Plan uh, Commission. I'm very uh, pleased to report that the Plan Commission approved both of our plans unanimously. So uh, our next step is a first reading at the Village Council on December 5th. So our team will be there. And then um, hopefully we will be approved at the December 12th meeting. So that would be a nice uh, holiday present uh, prior to the start of the new year. So we will keep the board and community um, you know, informed on the progress there. In terms of public relations, uh, this is hard to believe, but the Grove Express 5K Run Walk um, is coming. This is on Thanksgiving morning. It is one of our Education Foundation's largest events. Uh, it will start at 8 a.m. for the pre-festivities and then 8.30 at the starting line. I will be there and the race will uh, take off. So it's always a fun thing on Thanksgiving morning. This is a partnership between the Rotary Club, the Roadrunner uh, Soccer Club, and then uh, the Education Foundation of District 58. When the Bonfield Express Foundation can no longer continue to support this. Uh, we worked with Annette Bonfield, uh, who's a great individual, has done a ton for this community, her and her family. Uh, we were able to step in uh, with the help of the village, have all three groups come together. And uh, it is a tremendous sight to see the thousands of people from um, you know the start of downtown about Maple Avenue all the way back to the train track. So we hope to see everyone out there. There's still more time to register. Uh, race pickup information is at Downers Grove North this weekend. You can find that on the Grove Express uh, website. Just a couple of other quick things. Um, it's not only school board member appreciation week, it's also American Education Week. According to the NWA, more than half a million education support professional members take care of our children every day and make sure they have the tools they need to succeed in our schools and classroom. Education support professionals or ESPs, also known as school support staff, uh, sometimes we call them paraprofessionals in District 58 or secretaries. They strengthen our schools, communities, and associations across the country. They play a vital role on the education team and in the lives of students. So on behalf of the board, on behalf of our entire district, we want to thank our support staff. Um, we're going to recognize them on November 15th. We're also going to recognize our substitutes this week. Uh, those are those people behind the scenes that do so much for us and we're just so appreciative of everything that they do so we wanted to publicly recognize them at the board meeting this evening. And then last but not least, on behalf of the board and the district, we want to wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving. We hope everybody gets a chance to relax, recharge with uh, family and friends. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Any Thanks. questions or comments? All right, then we're going to bring uh, Todd Drefo back up with the monthly report and the, uh, and the treasurer's report. Yes, thank you. Uh, year to date report, uh, this is my once a month reminder that when you look at it, uh, we are one payroll off or one payroll behind or short uh, as we started this year, just how the calendar fell comparative to last year. So that's when you look at the salaries and we're, you know, 8.5 in the education fund versus 9.5 last year. It's not because we are, have less pay people, it's just we're one payroll cycle um, off. And where that actually, um, I bring that up again this month because 
if you go and look at the medical reserve fund, you will see that it is lower than normal. And that's because expenditure on the district side is revenue on the medical reserve side because that expense of paying benefits goes into that medical reserve for those health benefits, both from employee portion and employer. So you have a lower deposit number coming into that fund. So when you go look at the medical reserve fund, you may go, that's really low. Um, it's it's because we're 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 just dragging out. You know, the claims haven't gone down. It's that the revenue is down because we're one peril behind. We catch up in the end, uh, but just know that that you know, that one has that cause and effect for those. Other than that, um, I also point out that on on the revenue side, we're 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 low and behind on federal on federal funds. Uh, that's purely a piece of we've got to get some grant reports in and, and submitted for the first quarter. And that is something we're working to do to get that done uh, the next week or two, um, hopefully next two days, so that we can have some of that money coming in. So uh, that's just a piece on reporting piece that we've got to step up and get done uh, to get those funds in, in house. So we're working on that piece. Um, other than that, that is um, mostly what I have for the year to date report. Again, uh, just reminding, covering that cash balance piece. You know, we do have a balance that we show every month. Yeah, that meets those criteria for um, uh, for those requirements and, and do that. So, questions on the year-to-date report? Questions, Kevin? No. Nope. We have a few other things on the agenda for this evening. Uh, we, obviously, the tax levy. We talked about that piece. Uh, the uh, intergovernmental agreement with the village of Downers Grove. We mentioned in the tax levy kind of, uh, presentation about how we work to find ways of saving uh, and. Um, ways to collaborate and do things to control costs. Uh, the intergovernmental agreement uh, is a great um, item for saving money overall for the community because what uh, has happened is there's some work on the water main systems around Herrick that the village has on their schedule. And while we're going in and doing our capital work um, by entering into an agreement, with the village for accessing and doing some of the upgrades, both some that are required that we're going to have to pay for as part of the capital plan, but also then incorporating some of those things that the village was going to do on their plan and them reimbursing uh, the district for that uh, really has a huge cost savings for the community because otherwise, had we not done that, two years from now, the village would be digging up part of our asphalt and part of our our area, our, our property, in putting in those new update water mains if they went with their plan. So it was a great way for you know an overall savings for the community, and it was a similar to you know the agreement that we have with moving into the new village hall and when it's completed. Uh, just some some great opportunities of saving mm -hmm. uh, resources uh, overall, both for for the district and and for the the village. Uh, you also have on there. Um, Contract for the the support for the you know the elementary uh, pilot program that we have uh, that we've started with as well as a report in that memo report of of what we're averaging right now um, and also what we've been doing an increased uh, participation in middle school we're really excited about uh, what's happening there and, and how many more students are are buying and eating lunch there in fact that for the first time I remember Steph asked how they can buy lunch. Um, at school, so that that's an exciting piece. Um, and there's also the the school maintenance grant and a snow removal bid that are on on the you know for for approval. And just as right of the school maintenance grant, we're going to continue to target asbestos abatement uh, with that. And that's a fifty thousand dollar match. Um, we have multiple instead. You know, we've the last few years we've concentrated on one school. That areas we knew we were going to go into. Uh, this we're looking at a variety, you know, because there's a variety of programs, and it's all part of our capital piece. They'll be looking to uh, to do work, uh, and and making sure we're receiving that fifty thousand dollars in uh, state revenue to help offset some of those expenses. Yeah, just to piggyback off of Tom and, or Todd, excuse me. In the past, we targeted Henry Puffer for this grant because we knew that they had projects 
like the double layers of carpeting and things that we had to get rid of and in the basement and all of those things as well there. Now that those projects are completed, we want to spread this out to the uh, other schools. One of the things we have to make sure that we do is identify at least $100,000 worth of projects so we can get that 50-50 uh, match. So by spreading this out amongst all the schools, we're able to do that. So that's all I have. Great. Any questions or comments? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. The policy committee has not met since the last meeting. Now there is the legislative committee. Financial committee, uh, financial advisory committee has not met, nor has the DLT. And the health and wellness committee has not met. So that would bring us to discussion, which we don't have any tonight. So uh, public comment. This is an opportunity for members of the audience to share public comment with the board, but is not intended to be a time for members of the public to engage in a dialogue with the board. Issues raised during public comment may be added to future agendas or addressed by administrative staff as appropriate. As I said earlier, I have a lot of 30 minutes tonight and ask for a three minute limit. Um, I don't believe we received any cards, but I will open it up if there's anyone who would like to make a public comment. All right. That brings us to minutes. Are there any suggested revisions to the minutes as presented in the packet of materials? All right. If not, is there a motion to approve the minutes of the October 9th, 2023 regular meeting as presented? <coughs> Second. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Motion carried to approve the minutes from the October 9th, 2023 regular meeting as presented. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of the October 23rd, 2023 curriculum workshop as presented? So Second. All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstentions? Motion Abstention. carried to approve the minutes of the October 23rd, 2023 curriculum workshop as presented. Uh, next up is our consent agenda. Are there any items a board member would like to have considered separately? All right, if not, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda consisting of the personnel report and financial statements consisting of the list of bills and summary? Sorry, also the um, IASB resolutions. And the IASB resolutions. So move. Second. All right, Melissa, will you please go roll? <clears throat> Member Weiner. Aye. Member Doshi. Aye. Member Ellis. Aye. Member Hannes. Aye. Member Harris. Aye. And Member Hughes. Aye. And the motion carried. The consent agenda has been approved as presented in the packet of materials. All right, first recommended for action is the 2023 American Education Resolution. Is there a motion to adopt the American Education Week resolution as presented? So moved. moved. Second. All right, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carried to adopt the American Education Week resolution as presented. So, whereas the public schools are an important and integral part of our society, and whereas the concept of a free and equal education is an American tradition and is the country's strength, and whereas the students of today are the leaders of tomorrow, and whereas all citizens have a responsibility to support the public schools, now therefore have it be resolved that we, the Board of Education of Downers Grove Grade School District 58, DuPage County, Illinois, hereby proclaim November 13th through 17th of 2023 American Education Week and urge all citizens to make the commitment to public <coughs> education and to the future of our community, state, and nation by visiting their local public schools and by donating their time and talents to help make the public schools even better. And I dated it today, November 13th, um, 2023. All right, next up is the 2023 Certificate of Tax Levy. Is there a motion to adopt the 2023 Certificate of Tax Levy in the amount of $70,500,000? So moved. Second. All right, is there any discussion? I think it's just worth naming that uh, this is the second year in a row that we'll be uh, issuing a tax levy that's below the CPI just because of the limits. Uh, when CPI is below the limits, we don't issue it to be at the cap. And so this is an opportunity for us to just recognize that we will be bringing in less dollars than what the CPI has dictated our costs are going up at. Um, and so just another opportunity for us to recognize when, when we're trying to make ends meet as a district uh, and operating on razor thin margins that we are also hampered by some of the rules that we have to operate by. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? I think it's also worth noting, I always say this whenever we do the tax levy, um, only certain counties in Illinois are subject to the tax cap legislation. We are uh, the Collar County, so uh, DuPage is. There are districts out there that are not subject to this, and they can 
levy what they see fit every single school year. I share that because oftentimes we will have community members who may ask us, you can just tax whatever you want. Uh, the reality is we are very limited and we are very conscious uh, of all of that. So I would just like to remind people of the uh, PTEL legislation. Okay. All right. Um, Melissa, will you please call roll? Member Weiner. Aye. Member Joshi. Aye. Member Ellis. Aye. Member Hannes. Aye. Member Harris. Aye. Member Hughes. Aye. The motion carried to adopt the 2023 certificate of tax levy in the amount of seventy million five hundred thousand. Next up is our strategic plan for 2023 through 2028. Is there a motion to adopt the 2023 through 2028 strategic plan? So moved. Second. All right. Any discussion? I just want to thank everybody who's worked so hard on this and the DL team, DLT team who um, worked that. And then I would like to welcome uh, Bob here. Come on up. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I, I appreciate the opportunity just to make a few comments about your strategic plan. And it, it seems like yesterday, but it was last spring when we started and here we are in November. Uh, with all that work behind us. But, you know, it's amazing. Uh, you know, I heard from uh, your reports that, you know, Liz Earhart mentioned and so forth, and the, and the sentiment is clear that the culture in this district is for continuous improvement. I think you quantify that in every move. I think our strategic plan quantifies that, that you're always moving forward. And so first and foremost, I just, you know, like to thank the board uh, for the opportunity to serve the school district uh, as part of your strategic planning team and committee. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I have to tell you that of all the strategic plans that I've done, I've done many uh, over the years, um, this district had a large amount of time for action planning. That was the summer format, as you will recall, that was in our calendar. And I have to tell you, that that was time well spent. Uh, I'm amazed, and I'd like to publicly compliment, you know, Dr. Russell and the administrative team on a phenomenal job on that action plan. I have done so many strategic plans, I've never seen one at that quality level. And I have to tell you that as I move forward doing my strategic planning work, still doing a lot of it, uh, it will be a model for other districts. Um, so I think you should be proud of that and all that we have accomplished together um, we should celebrate so I wish you all the best and I, I look forward to you know our first report out at our 12-month benchmark when we talk about all the progress we've made yeah <laughs> thank you and thank you for being here tonight thank you, thank you. okay I appreciate the hard work thank you any other comments or questions I just echo what's already been said that um, having been on the other side of it the last time there was a strategic plan and then seeing how we did it this time and the um, participation from the community and really being able to um, talk through and have a back and forth at those um, two sessions which were very long nights so I appreciate all of the community members that showed up because it was a lot of hours it wasn't just coming to a library session and you know giving your comment for a second you were you were there for hours and putting in the work so um, I think it was reflected in what everyone will see now in the report here, and I'm, I'm really proud of it. Thank you. All right. Um, Melissa, will you please call roll? Member Weiner. Aye. Member Doshi. Aye. Member Ellis. Aye. Member Hannes. Aye. Member Harris. Aye. Member Hughes. Aye. The motion carried to adapt the 2023 through 2028 strategic plan. Next up is the intergovernmental agreement between District 58 and the Village of Downers Grove uh, for the replacement of the water main. Is there a motion to approve the intergovernmental agreement between the Board of Education of Downers Grove Grade School District Number 58 and the Village of Downers Grove for the replacement of this water main? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Um, All right. I just, Melissa, I just have one quick question. It, the the 250 thousand is enough right we confirmed or yeah it's so close to we asked the village the village in their planning um they had to go through and make sure that that number was appropriate that number actually came from the village of of Downers Grove as well um 
There are also safeguards, obviously, if the bids come out to be too much, we just will reject those bids and not move forward with that okay. uh, particular project. But yes, uh, we ask the exact same questions. <laughs> and uh, if for some reason bids come out too high, we always have the option of rejecting uh, those bids because yep. we will not go over cost on this one. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you. Anything else? All right, let's please go. Over. Member Weiner. Aye. Member Joshi. Aye. Member Ellis. Aye. Member Hannes. Member Harris. Aye. Member Hughes. Aye. The motion carried to approve the intergovernmental agreement between the Board of Education of Downers Grove Grade School District Number 58 and the Village of Downers Grove for the replacement of the water main. Next up is the elementary pilot lunch program food contract with Quest. Is there a motion to approve the food and beverage services agreement with Quest Foods Management Services LLC as presented? So moved. Second. All right. Discussion. I don't have any specific concerns with with the pilot. I just want to talk briefly and um, get some feedback from the administration about like what it means to pilot something and, and so like uh, in the past when we've piloted things and the board has voted to pilot something um, we've never really come back and, and assessed the pilot as, as a group and, and looked at um, some indicators of success uh, to, to uh, you know to evaluate whether the pilot was successful and whether it's something that we should continue doing so um, I, I would just ask, like, what are our when when is how are we going to evaluate this as a, at the board level before you know approving this to go into um, whatever whatever, at whatever a, a regular program um, and not just a pilot anymore. Todd, I'll jump in, and then if you have anything that you want to add, please uh, let me know. So the first thing is. This is not a finite program that will run into perpetuity. Uh, this expires at the end of this school year. So that will automatically force us to come back to have a conversation about what does next year um, look like. Now, um, so, so that's the first step. So um, this isn't just gonna continue and, and be a pilot forever. It's gonna go to the end of the school year and then we'll have to make a, a, a decision. The second thing that we spoke to the FAC at length about is making sure that anything in terms of food that we're doing can sustain itself and stand at its own two feet and not have to be subsidized through uh, the uh, other NSLP programs uh, that we have at our two middle schools. And so we're going to be looking at the dollars and cents of this in terms of profitability and making sure that, again, we're not in a situation where we're subsidizing um, lunches across the school district. Um, it is way too early to tell if we're uh, there yet what we need is uh you know several months of data in terms of usage and in terms of quest costs that uh, you know we've got to cover in terms of that to make sure that uh, we're doing okay but the fac will thoroughly examine uh, the profitability of this not that we're trying to make money on this we just don't want to lose money on this if that makes sense and um, also some anecdotal feedback we're going to be bringing back to the board about um, you know the institutional cost of this is it too much to handle at the building levels until we have our middle school kitchens up what, what are the secretaries telling us at the staff what are the principals telling us in, in the buildings as well so um, again we will review this um, by the end of the year we have to uh, we'll be reviewing it with the FAC as well on more of a, a monthly basis as we meet um, but we are looking at the dollars and cents of these things uh, how many lunches are we averaging a day what is our operational cost of those things to, to make sure that uh, we give the board all the information they need the other thing I just want to remind the board about is that we have a one-year food service renewal contract that we're in right now with Quest. And so we will be bringing another um, you know, food service bid to the Board of Education. And then with the data that we have, the board can then make a decision in terms of do we want to roll this in into the big bid? Do we want to continue to uh, you know, keep it separate? Do we want to do a hybrid of those? And that recommendation will come of a lot of feedback uh, from the FAC, and then in particular from Todd Drayfall going through this and, and monitoring the numbers. But um, sorry, I know that was a little no, long winded, but did I answer uh, those <coughs> questions? Yeah, and I would say, um, you know, I, 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 that's that sounds like at least the financial piece, but that makes it that's a good criterion to be evaluating. I'm just trying to think if there's anything else. Um, but could I, or uh, you know, if it comes, if it occurs to me or another board member, depending in the next couple of weeks, could we come back to you and say, hey, this is something else we'd like to be looking at? Like, for example, like like um, just um, your food quality or or satisfaction data from student yes. families, mm -hmm. things like that. I mean, I don't know if that's if that's really going to um, uh, carry as much weight, but you know, just the other thoughts we could just make sure that the board has has the ability to come back and 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 what, what this this 
particular pilot and any other pilot we're always talking about um, that, you know, <coughs> that, um, that feedback loop. And I apologize, I should have said that in uh, my explanation. We are collecting survey data, Quest will be doing survey data, and we'll talk about you know, the quality of, of the food as well, because that is in, important to us. Um, you know, there are very s small margins here, uh, so we always want to be realistic about what we're able to provide based on the budget uh, that we're able to do, but certainly looking at the quality of the food, uh, hearing back from the people who are taking advantage of this and, and seeing what they say about it. Cool. You brought up that we're in a renewal year. Mm -hmm. um, when is, where do, what time frame are we at where we're gonna be going in and requesting a renewal? And you mentioned that it could potentially be part of that one or potentially be separate. So. Um, I'm gonna let Todd answer that one. Yeah. He's got right, that. I, I believe in the conversations we've had with the FAC and that would fit in, um, we would, come back at the, the February FAC meeting with a recommendation whether to to stay at a national school lunch and what that would look like in the bid process and putting that out and having a a uh, proposal ready to go and then put you know to send to the state or that we go in a different direction where we might not want to do the national school lunch um, with its limitations and structure and, and, and in a different format now so that's can you some split that like right now we have national school lunch program right for our middle schools but we don't at our grade schools correct and i know yes. that was because it's kind of a weird year so is is that another third option that's potential while we're in this sort of gray area yes and then that well I, yes right now that is i mean with this contract you know and the, the format that we have with the elementary lunches that is not under the we are adhering to that standard right now and we're looking at at that aspect okay. and if we want to try something different to see how that uh because it is a pilot and some opportunities to see how people react uh, students and parents to different models uh, and see how those come out um but that is a national school lunch structure uh, it is not under the national school lunch we are not submitting for partial reimbursement for those meals that we are uh, even the ones that you know that, that students are uh, are paying for Okay. Um, so that you know, to that end. So does that put us having a conversation back here around February or March? Yes, February. February. Okay. Yeah, and so by that time, we will have multiple months worth of data. We'll have uh, that user feedback and all that. But what, what Todd said is is going to be the. It, it's almost a one-two um, step process where. First, we have to make a decision about the National School Lunch Program, whether or not that's something we want to remain a part of. If so, that will impact what kind of bid we go out uh, to the food service vendors. That'll be the second step. Um, if we don't want to be part of NSLP, then that will change the bid package. But certainly, um, we are going to be providing the board through our updates um, information in December and um, January, and then bring that to the FAC, and we'll be providing the FAC that information ahead of time as well. So then that way we can have a, a robust conversation with the FAC, then come back and have that uh, conversation with the board as well. Perfect. And then just a reminder that regardless whether we decide to move forward after the pilot program or not, even if we take action in February, we're agreeing to do this through the end of the school year. That is correct. When we discussed this with the FAC and rolled it out in this pilot, it was for the duration of the school year. We never want to, if we can avoid it, change any of our plans mid-school year if people are dependent on them. Uh, so what we're asking tonight in this approval is that commitment uh, to be memorialized with us signing the contract for the remainder of the year. Again, we can make a different decision in February or March about what next year is going to look like, but the remainder of this year will be the same. Sounds good. Any other questions or comments on that? All right, then Melissa, please go roll. Member Weiner. Aye. <coughs> Member Doshi. Aye. <coughs> Member Ellis. Aye. Member Hannes. Aye. Member Harris. Aye. Member Hughes. Aye. The motion carried to approve the food and beverage services agreement with Quest <coughs> Foods Management Services LLC as presented. Next up is the membership in the SDEAA Athletic Conference. Is there a motion to approve the membership of Herrick and O'Neill Middle Schools in the Southeast DuPage Elementary Athletic Association beginning in the 2024 through 2025 school year? So moved. Second. All right. Any discussion? Yay. Yay. Yeah. Uh, yay. Yes. I'm with you. This is like such yeah. great news. Yeah. This is. Thank you so much, Dr. Russell, for um, helping spearhead this because this has been a long-standing thing in the community. Mm -hmm. I have kids that are in sports that 
you hear about it out in the community and this has been something that's been talked about for a really long time so it's great to see it come to fruition mm -hmm. yeah i think two big things that we're going to see is um actually more than that uh first and foremost we're now a member with all the other district 99 feeder schools which mm -hmm. i think is huge that that's where we belong have the opportunity for our kids to see um, their teammates in high school or maybe their crosstown rivals in high school is a very uh, big important thing um, the the traffic um, getting to and from um, you know all the schools so many are located just so close to us it really um, does uh, make a lot of sense I still think one just word of caution um, in terms of the competition level one of the things that you're going to see in this conference like we saw in our previous one are there are bigger schools and there are smaller schools our two are definitely in the big school category um, so you know schools like Jefferson or Old Corey and Lamont that are very big schools are, are you know welving us and saying yes we can't wait to have some more big schools I think rightfully so some of the smaller schools are saying okay well what is this going to look like for us if we had two more big schools so we're working as a conference on scheduling more of the big schools playing each other and the smaller schools playing each other and then having some crossover games one of the other things that we're very excited about this conference is it opens our middle schoolers up to the IESA which is the equivalent to the IHSA for high school that means when the basketball season gets done you can go into the state tournament when the volleyball season gets done you can go to the state tournament another thing I'm very excited about is we talk about opportunities for all kids this is not just an athletic conference uh, we are opening the door up to non-athletic things scholastic bowl uh, which O'Neill has always done but Herrick hasn't that'll be offered to both of our middle schools there's an ISA uh, state competition for that chess club is another activity that we want to do um, as construction ends we'll open it up even further to things like soccer that we can host on our school grounds um, but right away next year we're already going to offer wrestling as a sport and so we're very happy about that you might ask how can we offer wrestling when we're getting rid of our gyms during construction and all that um, we plan on uh, using the elementary gyms that are close whether that's Fairmount and Pierce uh, where we can go over there if we don't have room at O'Neill and Herrick so we wanted to jump into this and provide as many opportunities as we can I want to thank the middle school principals for helping um, organize all this and and I do want to thank the SDEAA uh, as you know our conference um, imploded for lack of a better term and we were without a home there for a little bit and it was a little scary thinking that we wouldn't have any uh, conference sports for our kids and I, I want to thank our neighbor school districts I think that speaks volumes about the relationships that we have with them and uh, their willingness to take us in and so uh, we are looking uh, forward to this and uh, it, it should be really good for many years to come thank you any other comments or questions? <coughs> All right, Melissa, please call roll. Member Weiner. Aye. Member Joshi. Aye. Member Ellis. Aye. Member Hannes. Aye. Member Harris. Aye. Member Hughes. Aye. Uh, the uh, <coughs> motion carried to approve the membership of Herrick and O'Neill Middle Schools in the South uh, Southeast DuPage Elementary Athletic Association beginning in the 2024 through 2025 school year. Next up is the Civic Internet Circuit for District 58 use. Is there a motion to approve the three-year contract with Vero Networks for a 10 gigabit um, leased fiber circuit for a total cost of $37,375.20. So moved. Second. All right, any discussion? Melissa, please go roll. Member Weiner. Aye. Member Doshi. Aye. Member Ellis. Aye. Member Hannes. Aye. Member Harris. Aye. Member Hughes. Aye. The motion carried to approve a three year contract with Vero Networks for a 10 gigabit. Um, Lease fiber circuit for a total cost of $37,375.20. All right, we have the 2024 school maintenance project grant. Is there a motion to approve the application for the school maintenance project grant as presented? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Melissa, please go roll. Member Weiner. Aye. Member Joshi. Aye. Member Ellis. Aye. Member Hannes. Aye. Member Harris. Aye. Member Hughes. I have the motion carried to approve the application for the school maintenance project grant as presented. Uh, next up is the bid snow removal for 2023 through 2024. Is there a motion to award the bid for snow removal at all schools to Langton Group in Woodstock, Illinois? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Melissa, please go roll. Member Weiner. Aye. Member Joshi. Aye. Member Ellis. Aye. Member Hannes. Aye. Member Harris. Aye. Member Hughes. Aye. Motion carried to award the bid for snow removal at all schools to Langton Group of uh, Woodstock, Illinois. 
Last up is the surplus equipment of a refrigerator and a snowblower. Is there a motion to designate as surplus equipment the items listed in the attached memo? Second. Second. Any discussion? Melissa, please call roll. Member Weiner. Aye. Member Joshi. Aye. Member Ellis. Aye. Member Hannes. Aye. Member Harris. Aye. And Member Hughes. Aye. The motion carried. Uh, to designate as surplus equipment the items listed in the attached memo. A couple of announcements. Monday, November 27th at 3.45 p.m., the district leadership team will be meeting at O'Neill Middle School. Friday, December 8th at 7 a.m., the financial advisory committee will meet at O'Neill Middle School. And on Monday, December the 11th at 7 p.m. will be our next regular board meeting. That will be right here at Downers Grove Village Hall. The board will now meet in closed session. Is there a motion to move to closed session to discuss the appointment, employment, compensation, discipline, performance, or dismissal of specific employees of the district? That's 5 ILCS 122C1. Consideration of student disciplinary matters. It's 5 ILCS 122C9. Did you second. Need to be, yeah. okay. uh, uh, the placement or of individual uh, students in special ed programs and other matters relating to individual students. It's 5 ILCS 122C10. And litigation, when the public body finds that an action is probable or imminent, in which case the basis for the finding shall be recorded and entered into the minutes of the closed meeting. That's 5 ILCS 122C11. Don't have I don't need that. Yep. So uh, is there a motion? So moved. Second. All right. Is there any discussion? All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. The motion carried. The board will now move into closed session. It's 8.24 p.m. Let's meet by 8.30.